Welcome, everybody, to another edition of BTS Live. That's Behind the Scenes Live, episode number 33, double three. How is everyone today? Well, normally at this point in the show, right off the top, I always say, hey, and my partner in crime is Mark Rogers. Well, Mark is not here today. He is on vacation. Can you believe this? So I didn't want to uh, cancel the show today because I will be taking off an extended period of time, pretty much the whole month of August into mid-September. So I wanted to at least get a show and have a live show, have a visit with you guys, the loyal audience, um, and at least do something here before. I'll get into all the plans and what we're doing, why I'm doing what I'm doing in a second. But uh, hopefully everybody watched, right off the top of the show here, everybody watched the, the broadcast with Steven uh, and myself on the Wirecast um, Facebook page just a little while ago, a couple hours ago. And I don't have Pizza Joe's. See, Walter is asking for Pizza Joe's in the chat room. Um, but the Wirecast, on the Wirecast page, we did a show on Wirecast 7, uh, about a half hour, 45 minutes. Uh, hopefully everyone saw that. If you missed it um, and you want to see it, go back to Facebook, search Wirecast, go on their page. It should be right toward the top of the page. I uh, also shared it in the BTS Live Facebook group as well, so you can see it there. But uh, great show want to thank Stephen for having me on the show. Um, talked a lot about Wirecast and, and how it um, can be a good tool to get you started with live streaming and how uh, it can kind of grow with you. So a lot of good tips and, uh, and discussion there. So I invite you to check that out. Uh, I did want to do a couple of things, little housekeeping things off the top of the show here. And uh, I want to remind you that we do have a Facebook group and that is uh, here. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Here. That's the right lower third. Uh, Facebook.com slash groups slash BTS Live show. If you are not part of the group, I invite you. I'm First of all, I'm saying, what are you waiting for? <laughs> it's a great group. Uh, we have a great group of people. In addition to Mark and myself, we have Stephen, Brad, and Walter as moderators. And admins and uh, great discussion going on in the group uh, when we're not live people contribute you can see the Wirecast show right there uh, we shared it in the group today and uh, great discussion going on there you can see Mark Rogers and, and our friend Ross Brand a lot of good discussion a lot of good questions and all kinds of good stuff there uh, I think we're up to 86 members so it's growing and a uh, great group of people very diverse all different knowledge levels uh you do not have to be a professional video person to be part of the group that's really the purpose of the group and the way i see it is um it's not just me and mark or any of the other moderators steven walter or brad it's everybody you know so everyone can help everybody else so it's a, it's kind of a um that's why you call it a group right so so you, i certainly want to invite you to be part of that i will call your attention to most of you guys are watching the show on our website btslive.com you can go there you can certainly see the shows live every, normally every thursday 8 p.m eastern time 5 p.m pacific uh, we also play our shows our most recent shows um replays 24 7. Uh, usually i go back five or six shows and i play them in a in a loop so if you miss any shows, you can certainly, there's always something playing at btslive.com, even when we're not live. Uh, the other address you see there, uh, bit.ly slash BTS email, that's our email list. And the reason why I put that out there is we certainly had the Facebook group, but I like to have the email list because again, it's, it's a backup. It's uh, email always works. So especially when we're taking a break now, uh, it allows me to be able to keep you guys updated with with uh, schedules, changes, uh, specials that we might be considering. In fact, there'll be uh, things coming up that are not at our normal time. Some special things I'm going to get into a little bit later in the show that will make you guys aware of. Uh, but I certainly invite you to be part of that if you haven't already signed up. Uh, we do not, I do not send a lot of email. In fact, I haven't sent any email yet. So if you're worried about spam, you don't have to worry about that. I'm not 
I don't send a lot of it. It's mainly just to make sure that I can get a hold of you guys and make sure I can keep you guys informed um, beyond the the Facebook group um, itself. So um, so definitely uh, take advantage of that as well. So let's get into it. Um, quiet week. Uh, I do have a couple of um, questions that I did want to cover from the group. And this is another reason why I uh, encourage you to join the group. It's a very um, active group in there. I encourage you to leave your questions. That's, we've gotten topics for the show through the group. Um, so I definitely want to encourage you to do this. But I want to cover a couple ones that came in over the past couple weeks in the group itself. And I actually clipped them off. And I'm going to go to it now. So the first one is from uh, our group member, Catherine Lang. And she asked us back on the 20th of, of July, uh, I looked through the latest post and looked into the files, but I haven't found any simple steps for launching your live stream. So, uh, <laughs> Brad, I had see, here's, here's the funny thing, guys. I will say this right now, since I am solo tonight. I'm looking at the chat room, and Brad's already slapping people with fish. He's offering, um, he's, he's running a special on my Hawaiian shirts, 50% off just today. So that's why you want to be part of this group and be, and be part of the Facebook group and part of the chat room as well. So if you go to btslive.com, you can join the chat room if you're watching this on any of the other platforms that we stream to. Uh, if you're leaving comments on Facebook and you're watching there, um, I don't have the comments up, but I will go back and answer any comments there just so you guys know. If you're watching any other platform, I don't really pay attention to the comments there only because we have that centralized chat room. So if you go in there, btslive.com, and enter the, it's an IRC chat, Brad will certainly welcome you and slap you with a fish. So you have that to look forward to if you want to, if you want to be part of that. So getting back to Catherine's question, uh, as far as simple steps to launching your live stream, that's a great question, uh, Catherine. And I know, that, and that's a good thing about the group, and that came up in the group, and I know there's been people... Uh, answering in the group as far as what you can do to launch your live stream. Here's what I would say, and, and, and I would encourage you, if you didn't watch the show today with Stephen and myself talking about Wirecast, I would encourage you to take a look at that. Uh, and the reason is we talk a lot about two steps getting started. And again, Wirecast is great for that. Uh, it helps you get started quickly. And then you can grow with it so you can get pretty sophisticated. But I think that's the big thing, is just getting started. And here's what I would suggest, and I'm looking for my, here it is, my phone, of course. This right here. I would say, and this is the hardest thing about live streaming, I think, is, is I think everyone, and we talked about it on the Wirecast stream, I think everyone kind of like just waits and makes every excuse in the book that they need all this equipment, or they don't have the right computer, right camera, right this, right that. and in my mind, and I did a show recently on this as far as maximizing what you have, and really those are just kind of excuses because I think the important thing is just to get started because what you're going to see is your first live stream is probably not going to be what you really want. But I think that hurdle is so high, you really got to get started. So I think if you have a laptop with a built-in webcam, even and I'm, I'm kind of shuddering here, even the built-in mic... I'm not really a fan of that. And I would say, you know, I, and I covered this in other shows, and you probably heard about this. My recommendation is buy yourself an Audio Technica ATR2100, plug and play dynamic microphone. At least get that. Comes with the stand. Um, and you can even use your built in webcam to get started. And then I think on, an, on previous show, if you have a laptop, prop that laptop up, get that camera up to eye level, and then hit the, hit the button and go live. Um, and start there. Now, of course, we talked about preparation. The more you prepare, the better your show is going to be. We also talk about, you know, if you're going to be doing shows or creating content, you're probably going to want to do something around a subject that you're passionate about, that you really are into, that you know something about, that you can talk comfortably about it. Um, a good example today when we talked about Wirecast, both Stephen and I broadcast on a regular basis. We're very comfortable, very familiar with the topic. We're still learning, always learning, but it's easy for us to talk about it because we do it all the time. 
Um, so I would do that, and, and I would say also that you'd be surprised. There, you, if you don't think your niche has an audience, I'd say think, think again, because there's an audience, I think, for everything out there. Um, no matter how crazy you think it is, if you're interested in it, usually there's other people that are. And the other thing I find is, you know, especially with li live video, I'm not sure if you guys found this, but I don't think there's, I think there's going to be a minority of people that actually end up going on live and doing video live or recorded. I think the vast majority of people are going to be consumers. Uh, so I, I think that right there, just by going live, I think that puts you in a minority, a good minority, as far as people that are willing to kind of take that step. All right. So once you do that, though, easy to get started. Um, you want to continually improve, right? And, and again, I think, and Stephen and I have talked about this. It's not a question that you have to take that. Like right now, I have a be pretty decent setup. If I had another camera, you know, you'd see a, a big mixing board over there. I have a TriCaster. I have all this gear, but you don't need it, and you're not going to have it starting out of the gate. This is taking time to build up. So I think that's really the attitude you want to take is it's it's a building process, and you build it up and you add add a little at a time. And I always would default to what I call clean and simple over a lot of effects and a lot of different enhancement. I, you, I can always tell someone that is new to either online video or live video when you see a lot of fancy transitions that aren't really necessary, uh, a lot of kind of weird graphics that don't necessarily go together or have a theme. Um, you'll notice what I'm using tonight. Uh, I use two different transitions tonight. I'll use the dissolve when I go from my open to my main shot here, and I use cuts. I use cuts 90% of the time. And that's the simplest type of transition, right? There's nothing fancy about it. Even my graphics tonight, very simple lower third. I'll switch back and forth from my name to the name of the show. Uh, and then when I sh was showing the graphics for um, the Facebook group like this or BTS Live, I can just switch here. But they're very simple graphics, one bar, two lines of text, Nothing fancy, but informative and clean. There's a design theme to it. You know, it's easy to go. And even my open, uh, I started out with just a still frame and music. And then I went with this motion graphic and I kind of build it from there. I can get a little fancier from there. But again, it's not about that. It's more about what you're bringing to the table and the information that you're, that you're, that you're providing. Um, also would say that um, over switching let me see. Over switching with noobs. Yes, Walter. Absolutely right. <laughs> Walter makes a good point in the chat room. Um, you know, and you'll notice this with my show when I have Mark on or or Stephen Haywood's a great example. You know, we try to keep the switching. Now tonight, I'm not going to do as much switching. It's just me tonight, and I don't have a second camera angle. Um, but you know, we'll we'll switch around. We'll kind of keep it visually um, interesting. You know. So, but even before you do that, I think that just having good lighting, like I have here, I have nice, even lighting. I have a good microphone. You should hear me nice and clear. My video is clear. Uh, I have backlighting. So I take care of all the basics first before I get to any fancy, fancy stuff uh, down the road. Um, so that would be my, my advice. And again, realize that if you're into this in any kind of serious manner, it's going to be a long-term project. Right, so it's going to take you time to develop. Um, I think the the biggest joy of doing this is looking back at when you first started, and then go down, go like a year out, and then take a look at some of the first things you did. You should see a huge improvement, and that gives you some encouragement. I think it's like, oh man, I made some progress here. Um, again, it's not necessarily not. There's no fancy um, answer that I can give you. I. Uh, Walter says content, 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 and he's absolutely right. And the other point, thing I would point out is, and I call this the 90-10 rule, is when you are preparing for your broadcast, really 90% of the work is preparation and getting ready for a broadcast, whether it's technical, presentation, or the content itself. And then the 10% is what people see actually on screen. So this part here is 10% of what I put into the broadcast. And that's really how you should how you should approach it. 
Uh, I see a lot of people that are just getting into producing live shows or even edited shows. And you can tell if, they, if they're coming on and they're just kind of winging it. You can tell, you know. And again, I don't have a script for this show. You know, I kind of wing it in a sense, but I have an idea of what I'm going to talk about. You know, so there's a difference there. So you should always have like an outline or a rundown of what you want to cover. But then you go into it. If you know your subject matter, you should be able to talk to it and be natural about it. Um, so that would be my recommendation. You know, preparation, uh, step by step. Uh, but but certainly start, you know. And, and the other thing I would say is make sure you record, especially when you're doing live and where you have some type of recording, whether you're going to Facebook or whether you're just going from your phone. Uh, there's plenty of WebRTC platforms that make it very easy to get started, no fancy equipment, and they record. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to mention Blab tonight because <laughs> they're going down, but I will mention like FireTalk is a good choice. Huzzah, you know, they're a paid platform. That, that's, that's an interesting choice. Uh, certainly YouTube Live, Facebook, it's a little different um, there because if you want to go from the desktop on Facebook, you do need something like Wirecast or OBS or some other piece of equipment to do that. I know Huzzah just introduced a feature where you can go on a Huzzah and have it go directly to Facebook. So there are tools out there to make it easy, and I think that's the key is just getting started and record it. The key is re watching your recordings and not necessarily to nitpick everything you do, but at least to know, okay, here's something maybe I want to work on. So if you use a lot of ums, Maybe you can be more conscious of that and work on your pacing, for for example. Or if it's something with your camera angle, your lighting, well, maybe, okay, you recognize that and you want to work on that. Or maybe it's mic position or whatever it happens to be. But maybe pick out one thing that you want to improve and just take steps to improve that. And then over time, you should see uh, dramatic improvement, you know, in in overall, you know. But it's going to take some time. It's a, it's a gradual process. Uh, Alfredo, I'm just reading some of the comments there. Alfredo says, Huzzah can go RTMP, but currently cannot go from Huzzah to RTMP to Facebook yet. And, and Alfredo makes a good point. If they do have an RTMP option uh, where you can actually go into Huzzah RTMP. I don't know why you do that, to be perfectly honest. If you have RTMP, there's many better options to do to go because that's a WebRTC platform, but they do allow that. Same thing with FireTalk. They do allow it to go RTMP in to FireTalk. Um, but you can certainly do that as well. And Alfredo's correct that it's an automatic feed to Facebook. So there's no additional software that you need. You can just, I think it's in beta right now. You just kind of click a box and it just brings the, the, the video to Facebook directly. No graphics, no fancy stuff. It just brings it directly. And that does have some benefit if you're not familiar with software or whatever you want to get started. So that's definitely an option for you. Um, let me get to this other question that came in uh, from from Johnny Pappas, if I can get my thing to work here. Uh, let me get the other graphic here and get to Johnny's question. Let me just put it full frame here. And Johnny Pappas, who's a um, member of the group, he asks, I have a friend who would like to embark upon a journey of audio podcasting. She envisions that she'll be doing the interviews with one person, but I think she might appreciate the flexibility of having more than one interviewee. The interviews are going to be done in person, in a home or office. I need some advice from you audio podcasts, podcasters and wizards on what sort of equipment, mics, mixers, digital recorders, etc., and software she might use. I suggested Audacity as a free software solution with which to... Uh, post produce the audio thanks uh great question and the guys in the chat room are having fun with huzzah who's huzzah <laughs> who's yeah i'm with you guys i don't i don't know who, who huzzah is either uh but johnny asked a great question here and this is more of now nah, this is a video show but it's more of an audio question and if it's in person i would i would always default if you're going in and again starting out i always default to the simplest solution so I would say this as far as recording, and I'm, and I'm going to use uh, Mac as an example since I'm an Apple guy, and, I, and a lot of this stuff will translate to Windows as well. I would just use your laptop and either use, um, you can use QuickTime on the Mac, it's free, 
and you can record audio only or i would use um on the i'm sure on the windows side which i don't know if anybody wants to put in the chat room if they have a solution as far as a recording solution on the windows side i'm not that familiar with it but i would say this just get an Again, I'm going back to the well on the Audio-Technica ATR2100. It's a great mic. Plug and play. I would get one of those or a couple of those and use that. <laughs> you know? Now, if you have more than one person in, you know, in the same location, um, that could get a little bit trickier. So what you could do is get an audio interface with two XLR inputs. That's one solution. Because uh, you might run in, out of space on your on your computer to be able to plug in two mics, it's going to be difficult to share that mic, frankly, because it's a cardioid pickup, so it picks up right in front of you. So it's difficult to share with two people. So you're going to probably want to have two mics for the better sound. Uh, but you might want to pick up a like a focus right. I have a focus right box that I can't reach it. It's off to the side here. Uh, that that has two inputs, like an audio interface. And you can the the good thing about the Audio Technica is it has a USB connection as well as XLR. So if you want to just go to your computer, you can do that. Or if you want to go to a mixer or an audio interface, you can do that. So XLR balance connection, uh, and then from the audio interface to the computer, one USB cord in there, and you can record both sides. That would be one way. Uh, you can certainly get a digital recorder, um, Zoom which I would recommend makes several really good ones. Uh, I have the H4N, which is an older model. Um, the top of the line is H, I think H6N, which has like, like I think up to six different mic inputs on it and it's got different mic capsules you can put on top. So that could be a solution as far as using one device and depending on the room you're in, putting it in the middle of a table and recording that way and again these are very down and dirty solutions to get you going um, but again if you're gonna do it on a higher level of course you're gonna get you're gonna involve mixers and uh, and de and better microphones I mean the, the microphone I'm using here is a Heil PR 40 which is a large diaphragm dynamic microphone and again we've gone through this before dynamic microphones are usually better for home studios because they're not optimized. The, the studio space itself is not optimized for sound. And dynamic microphones, are, especially cardioid mics, which only pick up right in front of the mic, are really good at sound re or, uh, noise rejection on either side. So if I go to the side here, you're not gonna hear me as well as I'm talking right at the top of the mic. It, this is a top address microphone. And, and actually I have an air conditioning running in the room here and you're probably not hearing it because I'm also using a noise gate which is another piece of gear that I use in conjunction with a mixer that actually, sh there's a threshold that shuts off the microphone when it's silent. So when it's silent, you shouldn't hear anything at all. It should be perfectly, perfectly silent. Um, so that's what I would do uh, as far as starting your shows. Uh, so hopefully that answered some questions. And I see the chat room's having a great time uh, in there. So those are the two questions I want to cover here. Uh, and again, I told you it's, it's, it's going to be an abbreviated show. There is a couple of things I, I do want to bring up as far as what we have planned for the rest of August, in September, and also in October. And uh, let me go to that. Let me just bring up the right page. Um, I'm going to be taking the, the show is going on hiatus. Um, let's see. Alfredo had a question. Noise gate is built into the mixer. No, the, it's actually the noise gate is actually a separate piece of equipment that I have um, um, connected to the mixer. So you can. I think that there are mixers with noise gates built in. There's are special di digital boards that have noise gates built in. I know the TriCaster. The advanced edition software that I don't have yet, but uh, but probably will be getting, that actually has noise gate um, a feature that you can actually um, implement in the in the built-in audio mixer in the TriCaster. But for me and for most people, it involves usually a separate box that's uh, usually combined with a compressor uh, and a limiter and a gate. Those three functionality in one box. And my particular um, noise gate is a compressor limiter gate that has four channels on it so I can actually put four different microphones in there uh, individual channels and do it that way so and you hook that up to your mixer via a, what's called an insert cable so but I won't get into that it gets a little more technical uh, but that's that 
Uh, so, as far as the show, we're going to take the rest of August off, and primarily because I'm actually going on the road. Uh, part of I, now, I don't do the show as part of my business. This is I don't make money with this show. So I actually have a business, a video production business. I do live video and produce video, as well as we do social media marketing. We have several clients. And one of the clients I'm working with, we actually are doing some shows on the road. We're actually doing some live streaming from a series of parties that we're going to be help produce. Uh, four different cities. Uh, we're going to Pittsburgh, uh, let's see, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Chicago, and Detroit. Um, so I think we're in Pittsburgh first, then Detroit, then I think Cleveland and Chicago. Four consecutive weeks. And this is for a major, uh, well, I work for a agency whose client is a major uh, wireless carrier. Uh, begins with a V, and you all know what that is. Anyway, so these parties, we're going to be doing some Facebook live streams, hopefully if we have the bandwidth. So that's why I'll be tied up with that. So I'll be doing a lot of traveling. A lot, I'll be bringing my my. TriCaster Mini, so hopefully we'll be we'll have enough bandwidth. We'll be able to do some live streams, but I will keep the group uh, a prize, and I will be putting the links because they'll be on different pages, different Facebook pages that are specific to these parties. So if you do want to see what it's like to stream from location using some fancier gear, using TriCasters and using multiple cameras, uh, I will be doing that. And Stephen is actually going to be in, in Pittsburgh with me. So you'll probably see some at least some Snapchats or some Instagram stories. I'm not sure if he'll be on the live stream because that'll be with my client. And I'm not on the live stream. I just produce them. Um, so you'll see some of that. You'll see some party action. Maybe Stephen will make a cameo in the, uh, in the background. You never know. But we'll certainly be, <laughs> be posting on our Instagram stories and Snapchats. I'm sure uh, we'll be doing that for, the, uh, for our, our group here. Uh, so that'll be exciting. So if you do want to see what it's like to stream from the road, I think, and the, that's the reason why I bring it up, is that you know this show is all about you know live video production, and anytime we get to show you an example of that, I think it's good. Uh, but I'll be sharing that in the group, so that's why you want to be part of the group and sign up for the email list. So we'll be sharing those links. So it'll be on Facebook Live, and hopefully, if we have the bandwidth, we'll be able to do that, and it should be fun. So that starts on August 18th is our first party and there'll be four consecutive four consecutive thursday nights and it'll be like prime time in the seven seven to ten o'clock range eastern time that we'll be streaming uh sorry uh walter no pizza joe's maybe maybe uh, uh steven will bring a pizza joe's down with him uh when he visits pittsburgh and maybe we'll take a picture i don't know that'll be up to steven i'll i'll leave him uh <laughs> Stephen goes, I will be there so I can break things. So that's good. See, that's I'm, I'm happy that, that we invited Stephen. So he'll be the life of the party. So four consecutive weeks. So that'll be exciting. So obviously it, makes, it makes, puts a crimp on the show schedule. So we're going to take August off. We Right now we're, we're planning on being back on September 15th, that Thursday. Uh, and we'll resume for a couple weeks. Then we're going to take another week off. And for a very good reason. And, and let me put up the graphic here. And this also involves, um, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag here right now. So um, I'm going to be um, actually in Germany. Uh, let me put the lower third up, let you guys know. I'm going to be in Germany uh, the first week of October with my wife. Uh, we, uh, we have been invited to speak at the first video summit Lipsic in Lipsic, Germany. It is, it, Lipsic is between berlin and frankfurt and so we fly into berlin we spend a couple of days there and we go we take the train into Leipzig. and the cool part is that i will be moderating the close it's a two-day conference i'll be moderating the closing keynote panel on day one it's all about video and and um how video uh can be used with with social and and with your brand and, and video marketing that type of thing and, and uh so my wife is is one of the panelists, along with a good friend of ours, Ann Tran, and another good friend, Glenn Gilmore, who's a uh, video influencer. Ann is a, a very well-known travel influencer, and we're going to be talking about how you can use video and live streaming in um, in marketing your brand. So that'll be day one. And then the really cool part, not that that's not cool enough, but the really cool part 
is uh, let me go, let me uh, bring up the page here where it has uh, and and hopefully and we're, we're gonna get Steve Steven's gonna be actually on here but and you can see uh, down here me and my wife and let's see no well anyways um, but the really cool part <laughs> is uh, we I am doing the closing keynote for day two for the final day and not just the keynote but it's actually gonna be a, a keynote live stream from Germany but that's not even the cool part the coolest part is Stephen Haywood and Mark Rogers are gonna be involved so what we're planning on doing check this out hopefully this all works uh, Stephen and I are, are coordinating this now and, and I told the conference organizer and and she was thrilled and it's already on the uh, conference schedule I'll show you that um, but what we're planning on doing is for our talk we're just we're gonna do actually a live stream show and kind of demonstrate I'm just bringing up the uh, the uh, program here uh, we're gonna demonstrate and it's right down here you might not be able to read it but oops there it goes so uh, it's gonna be video live stream the future of video marketing platform strategies and technology and what's cool about it is Steven has agreed to be our host so what we're gonna do is since I'm over in Germany Steven is gonna run the show from his studio at his, you know his home studio and he's gonna take care of the live stream. He's gonna bring me in via Skype. And same thing with Mark. Mark's gonna be at his home studio. He's gonna be brought in by Skype. And we're gonna do a show. You know, I'm gonna come in from Germany and we're gonna demonstrate. And we're gonna have the live, live audience there in Germany at the conference. And they're gonna see the show live. Uh, we're gonna put it on the big screen there. And, and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the video return through Skype from Steven so it's going to be very very exciting yeah i mean uh we'll keep you guys uh, you know apprised of, of what time it is i would say this uh eastern time it's probably going to be in the 10 o'clock about 10 p.m eastern time uh on october i believe it's october 5th let me just check the website here yeah wednesday october 5th i believe it's we're, we should be starting around 10 p.m eastern time and that'll be that's 4 p.m uh in germany uh Leipzig time and so you extrapolate that out, uh, se you know, uh, 7 p.m. Pacific. So it kind of matches up pretty good. So hopefully you guys can watch live. It'll be embedded on the uh, Video Summit Lipstick website as well. And we'll get you the links for that. That's one way that you'll be able to, to watch it. Uh, and then we'll let you know if it's going to be available elsewhere. I would imagine that we'll probably be multicasting um, the keynote. Uh, like we normally do our shows, but uh, but the organizers were very very excited about it when I told her about Stephen and Mark and how we do these shows together. Um, it's a great way to end the conference. So I'm just really excited to be part of this, and so obviously I'll be taking time off for that as well, but for very good reason. So that's the kind of stuff that we're looking to bring you guys, along with um, we Mark and I expect to do um, some more interviews. Um, we have, uh, we're working on some interviews with some equipment manufacturers, uh, Skype TX. We're going to have the guys from QuickLink on. We're in talks with them. Uh, I would expect to have um, the folks from Joycaster. I'm going to have those guys on and also New Blue Effects. So we're working on having some of the technical folks on uh, going forward, as well as, um, let me switch this up here, as well as. Um, from the folks from Joycaster I want to have on. Uh, they've got some exciting stuff happening in the world of multicast and cloud video and how to manage that. In fact, I both Stephen and I both use Joycaster as our service to be able to multicast to multiple platforms. It's a great service. They're working on some really good um, cloud, uh, cloud services that they're working on that, that will be coming out pretty soon. So we'll be talking about that. So all that type of technical stuff at the same time, the in front of the camera stuff, I know Mark is working on, we're working on getting additional interviews. We had a, a local anchor on not too long ago, a month or so ago. Want to get more on, you know, um, talent, you know, live talent on, um, anchors, uh, hopefully some folks from ESPN. Uh, Want to get some uh, behind the scenes people on as well, just to give you a flavor and give you an idea of what it's like, you know, at those levels and 
what people do and, and get some more of those interviews on. So we're looking at really kind of expanding the show. I mean, we started this show last fall. Uh, we're almost at the year mark. I can't believe it's been a year already. And, and I, I just want to, you know, as we go into hiatus here, I just want to thank everyone. Uh, you know, it's just beyond words and just appreciate everybody, you know, being here every week. We started on Monday afternoons. We kind of moved the show to Thursday nights. Um, really, that's why I wanted to come on here because I knew we would um, be taking a break. So I want to at least get another show in and update you guys on what's coming up. Uh, but we're really excited about what's coming up. I mean, playing on, you know, certainly doing a lot more work with Steven. I mean, um, it's been great with, with him and just the community, Brad and Walter, uh, in, in our group, and uh, just met some great people. So a lot of plans coming up. Um, I think uh, I'm going to cut it right there. Uh, but it's been uh, been a great first season, first year. I'm not sure if I'm going to say when we resume, this is going to be like season two or I don't know. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to keep the replays going on uh, btslive.com. You'll see those 24-7 as long as my bandwidth holds out. Uh, you'll see those. Um, as I said before, certainly um, I'm going to put the uh, URL up again. Um, if you're not part of the uh, email list, certainly invite you to sign up for that uh bit.ly slash bts email um and also the facebook group facebook.com slash groups slash bts live show uh certainly do that before we go though and i almost i almost forgot i did want to mention uh uh and call attention to a community member uh and uh, um some uh kind of a struggle that uh he is going through right now uh garrett garrett berge who uh, many of you know um is part of our community a uh, great guy um along with walter and brad we're we're always yapping in in skype and and he's another person that we've met uh doing these live shows um if you're not aware uh garrett is um kind of struggling with some with some health issues right now he he is one of the nicest guys out there um you know that i've met through doing this and uh, I want to call attention to he has a GoFundMe page up right now he's struggling with some uh, he needs a kidney transplant uh, he tells his story very well uh, he posted a video on it on his page um, GoFundMe.com slash ECL FSW is the short link to get to the page uh, check it out uh, if you can help that would be great I know Garrett is going live on um, Blab um dot i am on saturday i believe i want to say eight or nine o'clock central time i don't have the link for that but if you search blab dot i am uh and garrett Berge, i'm sure in fact if you go to the facebook group um there's a post in there and we'll certainly promote it i think he's going to be going live and we're going to do a little fundraising um on saturday but if you can, if you if you find it um, that you can uh, certainly check out his page, and if if you can uh, offer some help, that would be great. Um, it's obviously very expensive, um, uh, medical expenses. It can it can really pile up, and and Garrett is um, is just an incredible person, and uh, I certainly uh, want to make um, make note of that. Um, if you can help, uh, that would be that would be uh, fantastic. Um, so again, thanks everyone, um, for tuning in. Uh, we were again, taking a little break here. Uh, we will be back, um, again, man, like what, a little over a month from now, uh, September 15th, uh, watch the group, watch the emails, sign up and, um, we'll be blasting out those live stream links. Watch your Instagrams, watch your Snapchats for, I'm sure we'll get some Steven and Marty shots in there. I'm, I'm meeting Steven for the first time in Pittsburgh, so I'm really looking forward to that. Maybe he'll bring me some Pizza Joe's, you never know. <laughs> so that would be awesome. Um, so thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, it's been great. We will see you uh, in a few weeks. And uh, stay close in the Facebook group, um, and um, we'll see you on the streams. Take it easy, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye. And it would help if I... See, here you go. See, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this right now. So it would help if I actually had the thing set correctly. Anyways, guys, thanks, thanks very much for tuning. We'll see you next time.
Thank you.